Well, they look extremely beautiful, but could they be dangerous? The aurora borealis, or the northern lights, could pose a potential threat to all of our technology, including GPS systems and satellites. NASA sent up a rocket last week to study the effects and prepare for next year when the lights will be at their peak. Here to discuss is physicist and author of the book, Physics of the Future, Michio Kaku, who is currently on a book tour for, the, for, the, uh, for that big book. Nice to see you this mm -hmm. morning, Michio. Right. Glad to be on the show. Great to have you. So, as Allison said, they are beautiful, but they could uh, cause a major problem to our electronic infrastructure. How? That's right. Every 11 years, the sun has a temper tantrum. We had this spectacular light show, this dazzling array of radiation from the solar wind which hits the earth funnels down the North Pole and if you're in Alaska or Scandinavia it's like the sky is on fire it's an amazing show it is so beautiful but explain to us how it could be dangerous well NASA is so worried that a few days ago it sent up a, a, uh, a rocket 200 miles into outer space because it could damage the GPS system our satellites astronauts could be endangered not to mention that in the past Quebec parts of South Africa have been blacked out because power plants on the earth are also vulnerable to short circuits this is amazing and according to the research physicists believe this could cost us two trillion trillion dollars in a maximum scenario it's actually happened back in 1859 we had the mother of all solar storms the aurora borealis could be seen in cuba cuba you could see it in 1859 you could read the newspaper by yourself at night according to the the accounts now if we had another 1859 event which is very rare once every few centuries we would be sent back perhaps a hundred years into the past Power plants could get wiped out on the Earth. Satellites could be blacked out. Fox News would just disappear because all the satellites oh, would be short-circuited. <laughs> That's right. So is there anything to do about this to prepare? Well, we physicists said to Congress, instead of gambling $2 trillion on this once-in-a-century event, why not spend chump change, a few hundred million, reinforce our satellites, redundant power systems, uh, make sure that our power systems have backup systems. And Congress just laughed at us, pretty much. Is this one of those events where you and others talk about it and pr warn people about it and we don't do anything about it until it happens. Yes, unfortunately it's true. But remember, next year is the peak of the solar cycle. So for you amateurs out there, it's going to be spectacular. 2013 is the peak of the 11-year cycle. The North Pole and the South Pole of the Sun flip every 11 years, releasing this burst of energy. But it's a headache for NASA. It's a headache for the satellite people, the military, the GPS people. So it's going to be beautiful, but we're going to wake up in the Stone Age. Okay, uh, Michio <laughs> Kaku, thanks so much for coming in to tell us all about it and explain okay. it. And we won't be able to use these. Oh. What will you do? I'm going to cry. I'm going <laughs> to cry. Thanks, Mitchell. Appreciate